Okay, welcome to this episode of the Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. My name is Paul Burgess and I am here again with Christina. Morning, Christina. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. I'm really feeling on top of the world at the moment, which is great. How are you? Good. And if I'm very good. And if you are watching the video on YouTube, you'll see Christina is looking particularly well at the moment. And there's a whole big reason for that. And we're going to talk about that today. Yep. Um, so, yeah, let's get straight into it, Christina. We are going to talk about your prep because you are going to compete in how many weeks is it? Uh, seven weeks out now. Yeah. Okay. And it's the UKBFF um, qualifier. Which yeah, it, which um, category are you going it's in? It's body fitness. It will be the South Coast Portsmouth Guild Hall on the 26th of April. So if you want to go down and support Christina, feel free. Get down there, cheer, have banners, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Make her feel at home. Um, so let's talk about it. What did you do? When did you start prepping? If you're six, seven weeks out now, when did you start prepping? Where? How did you even change things? Okay. Where, where did that? Well, where did that cut off come? I started out 16 weeks out, which was you know January after all of the New Year's and the Christmas re- relaxing, shall I say? Um, so I gave myself 16 weeks. I thought that should be more than enough time for my first prep. Um, I'm not really one to get really out of shape and I'm not one to do the whole bulking, your stereotypical bulking thing. So I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about the amount of time I had and fingers crossed, touch wood so far, everything is kind of going in the right direction. I think I'm, um, if not ahead, then I'm certainly on track. Um, but for me, it's quite difficult to tell because, um, this is my first competition. I've never really dieted down to this extreme before. So if you were to ask me, you know, how much have you got to lose? I don't know. I'm just going by the mirror. I look, I'm, I'm looking like I'm improving. I look good. So it's kind of keeping me on track that way. Yep. And I remember actually asking you that very question mm-hmm. and saying, how much do you think you need to lose? And you just looked at me and went, <laughs> no idea. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, 16 weeks, that's quite a long lead up mm. for a lot of people. Um, my personal opinion is that the longer you can do it, the better. Mm. Some people tend to want to do it shorter because it means they've got to be more disciplined for a short period of time. I think because you are pretty much disciplined all year round and you're never really f- out of shape, as it were, um, it's going to be a lot, lot easier mm. for you and especially over an extended period of time. So from a mental perspective... I think that's an easier thing to cope with. Certainly mental, but also physical. I mean, um, physiologically, it's not very good for anyone really to be shocking the system, at least for long extended periods of time. You know, for 12 week, for a 12 week prep, if you've got to lose, say, I don't know, a couple of stone, that's it's it's too much. It's I think it's 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 better to th- take things slow to allow your body to adapt instead of completely throwing everything out of sync, out of whack, you know, you'll probably struggle with your sleep patterns, your hormones will be all over the place, um, obviously your metabolism, so yeah, I don't I don't really think that's a very healthy way or productive way to do it or sustainable way to do it if you were just... And, and you'll also lose a lot of muscle mass on the way yeah, of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, which is really, really, people don't get how important that is because the more muscle mass you've got, the more fat you will burn because you'll have a higher basic metabolic rate and people I've seen them dieting down really quickly or worst is they come to me and go right I've got a comp in eight weeks and I need to get into shape and you just go well just don't do the competition go and do another one later in the year where you've got some time to prep for it no 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 I've said I'm going to do this one now I've got my bikini or I've got Mm. my my place I've booked it and it's just it just doesn't make sense Uh, people just are so naive to it and I think one of the reasons over the last couple of years, literally over the last two years, why it's become so popular is that more people are seeing other people in their gym competing. Mm-hmm. They don't see them as anything special. In other words, well, they're someone I know in the gym. If they can do it, I mm-hmm. can do it. They jump on that whole bandwagon of, right, I've got to get ready. They find themselves a coach potentially, or they try and do it themselves. Mm-hmm. And they cause all sorts of problems. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Three years ago, you might have had 50 athletes at a competition. Now you've got 200. Mm, yeah. And more and more people are just jumping on it because they think it's easy. 
and they get themselves into all sorts of problems, especially, in my opinion, the, the ladies, mm -hmm. because it causes a lot of eating challenges and many disorders come out of it, messed up metabolisms, you know, 500 calories a day with three hours cardio nonsense going on. Big, big problems. Anyway, so, yeah, go on. Well, Sorry. it's funny. I mean, just to touch upon the subject of uh, shocking the system, and as you know, right at the beginning, I got, even I got very excited, and I planned a little mini cut for four, I wanted four weeks, and even though, as I say at the start, I didn't really have a huge amount to lose, I wasn't out of shape, but I thought, right, this is, this is going to be really cool, I'm just going to do a really quick short stint of four weeks, just go balls to the wall, lose as much as I can, and then just get back on track and sort of cruise through. I was so excited. I just wanted to see big changes straight away. Drop my calories. I went down from about three and a half, three three thousand four hundred calories down to, um, I think it was two two and a half thousand. So I I literally just took a thousand calories down, and I thought this, this that should be fine. That's still a low. It's it's a hot. It's quite high um calorie intake still. So off I went really happy and chirpy and then about three days in you saw me at the gym just sitting there feeling sorry for myself I'm really struggling <laughs> and um yeah I learned my lesson I thought no forget about this I'm just I'm just gonna do it the way I was planning to do it in the first place and you know what this is really interesting for people to listen to because I did see you that day and I did ask you what are you doing and you told me and I said what just <laughs> why what what is your purpose behind that? Oh yeah, well you know, and and I said to you, Christina, you know better than that, and you do know better than that. But what's really interesting from a psychological perspective is even people that know really <laughs> a lot about this stuff yeah. get sucked into that whole thing about yeah yeah, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. I think I can make this. <laughs> I can reinvent be the wheel. And it doesn't need to happen. Yeah. It really doesn't. But two and a half thousand calories is still a lot of calories for a female athlete. Mm. But it wasn't a lot for you because you were used to eating 3,400. Mm. So if you take someone off the street and say to, you know, someone the same height and weight as you, a female, but doesn't have that same muscle mm. content that you have, and you say to them, right, you're going to eat 2,500 calories a day, they'll freak out because it will be probably, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred 800 calories more than they're normally eating. Mm. But for you, that's a completely different thing. So, again, it's, it's another it's thing relative, about... absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what's really important to get. Mm. So once you got over your um, nonsense yeah. and uh, and thought that you could reinvent the wheel and got yourself back on track, 3,400 calories, and then what happened? How did you start looking at what you were going to do? What was your plan and how did you put that plan together? Okay, so plan was to go as modestly in terms of my deficit as possible just try and get more bang for my buck um, I think I lowered it down to 3,200 at first um, I believe I did it for about two to three weeks um, then I took it down to 3,000 um, so that would have been another two to three weeks yes yeah, it's, it's, I think I did three three and three because I'm not I think I'm nine weeks in now so it would have gone from 3,400 to 3,200, down to 3,000, and now I'm on 2,800. Um, and over these past, I've got this written down here. Um, so that would have, yeah, I started out 78 kilos. Um, so within the nine weeks I've been dieting, I weighed myself this morning, I'm 72. So it's Brilliant. been just over a pound a week so far and that's kind of it's worked pretty well for me um, my my main issue or my my main um, hang up if it were was to lose any strength I mean for me, I don't it's, it's just me I just want to be as strong as possible if I lose my strength and I know that if you're suffering with your performance that's a sure sign of you know losing muscle mass and not going about things the right way um, or at least causing some sort of detriment somewhere along the way. So for me, the perfect gauge is always my strength. Um, so 
going much slower, I realized that I could really um, maintain as much strength as possible. I mean, and some of my lifts have gone up, others have stayed about the same. And there's a couple which have just, just very slightly dropped down a little bit. So I'm really pleased so far with that. That was just my main issue. I didn't want to lose okay. any strength. And so by very slowly dropping down your calories mm -hmm. each week, how did you implement that into your diet? Did you turn around and go, right, I'm just going to cut it across the board, or did you take it out of your fats, or where did you go? I mainly cut it, well, my fats, okay, so basically what I do is I, I cycle my carbs, so I have like a high day, a medium day, and a low day, and I also, on the high day, I don't carb backload, but on the other two days, I'm backloading, so I'm eating all of my carbs towards the end of the day after my evening workout. Okay. So it's kind of a combination of both backloading and cycling. Um, one of the days, my Sunday, is pretty much a free day. Now, I, I'm i not saying I'm one to do cheat meals. I've, I never have. I'm not into cheat meals. Um, they don't appeal to me. I think each to their own. And if it works for you and you need that psychologically, then that's perfectly fine. For me, I just prefer to have... Um, freedom as it were but I'm quite um, I'm quite sensible with that freedom so if I might feel like I need a treat or a quest bar or two Sunday will be my day usually to to fill in my but obviously I'm watching out for my calorie intake just as a general rule um, one thing I have to say is that I no longer weigh my food unless it's um, meal prep sorry on the Sunday I don't I don't, I don't um, do the whole my fitness pal on a free day. I just want it to be a nice relaxed day. Um, for my other three days, I usually cut down on the carb intake. Um, I function quite well on fats, and I enjoy. This is the reason why I carb backload because I really enjoy it. I feel like I'm full of energy. I feel like I'm um, focused throughout the day. So for me, it just works. Um, how do you okay? So how do you feel yeah. on the day that you're on your high carb day? How do you mean I feel? Do you feel any different? Oh, um, it it actually works. <laughs> well, it's three hundred. It's two hundred ninety five grams of carbs, and that's right. spread throughout the day. I feel fine on that, and I think both ways work for me. I I'm not sort of trying to force feed myself the carbs throughout the day or you know in a short space yeah. of time so for me it works perfectly fine as well i don't okay, i so, don't find that i get tired and and sluggish you know like some people might find okay so this is interesting from my perspective so it's 295 <laughs> on a high day mm -hmm. and then the next day which is your medium day medium day i have got 169 so okay and then on a low day low day is 57 or thereabouts. Okay. Yeah. So, and they're, are they all uh, 2,800 calories? These are, yeah, well, 2,900, and that's on the high day, 2,800 on the medium, 2,813 on the, on the um, low. Okay, so what are you doing then with the other macronutrients on those days? You're keeping the protein the same and then adjusting the fat? Protein or? pretty much stays the same. Well, it's for me, I, protein, it, it tends to stay around the same between 170 to 200 grams, but I'm not, I just need a minimum of my 170 that I would say um, in terms of pound of, of yeah. body weight. I don't do lean mass because that's, Difficult to um, for anyone to to um, to assess guess. accurately. Yeah, um, so I would adjust. I would tend to adjust, obviously, my carbohydrates um, and my fats. Let's see, fats, fats, obviously lower on the high day, ninety six. Um, medium day, they're one hundred and forty nine. So almost the same as my carbs, and on the low day. They're high. They're 178 grams. So, yeah, so you're cycling your carbohydrate, but you're also cycling your fats to keep. Pre that yeah, pretty balance. much to to keep uh, everything in balance. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what's interesting then is carb backloading. I understand the principle very well. Mm -hmm. 
but the more study I do with regard to timing of the carbohydrate, mm-hmm. the less I think it's important. Oh, really? I understand the whole, yeah, GLUT4 receptor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think it's more, it's been made more, there's more made of it than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So it's fine if it suits your lifestyle and you say, right, well, I'm just having 50 grams of carbs today or, or 80 grams and I can do that all in one meal, then I'll push that to after my workout because I'm quite hungry mm. then. But what was interesting, as you said, was that when you have them throughout the day, you feel no different energy-wise mm. than you do if you have them all post-workout. Mm. Um, it'd be interesting to know if you did that long-term, how it affected you, how it affects your performance, mm. but also, more importantly, how it affected you from a brain function point of view. Because you've still got quite a lot of uh, fats in there. You've got almost 100 grams of fats mm. on a day where you've got almost 300 grams of carbs. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of fats going in there to uh, deal with all the bodily functions, all the brain yeah. functions, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm wondering whether or not if you did it throughout the day, every day, mm. if it would make much difference to you. Mm. I'm not saying you should. I'm yeah. just saying it's interesting to me that the timing of it might not be that important anymore yeah. compared to what people think. I think also just having variety. For me, it's it's just always worked across the board in terms of everything I've ever done. I yeah. get, not necessarily get bored. By nature, I am very, um, I have a short attention span. I need to be doing 10 things at once. I'm always multitasking. I need to be um, in three different jobs or career endeavors at any one time. So with my diet plan, variety is always going to be key for me personally. Um, yeah. Some people really enjoy that regimented everything the same because they feel like it's more routine, it's more um, constant. Personally, I, it just doesn't work for me. And I think in terms of food choices as well, that's hugely important to make sure you've got as much variety in there as well. Definitely. If you're going to eat chicken, rice and broccoli at every mm. meal for 12 weeks, you are going to be deficient in all mm. sorts of nutrients and you're going to feel like crap. Yeah. But a lot of people do it the same every day. So say, for example, if I'm going to produce something for someone and they've said to me, look, I just want the same every day because it's easier for me, because it's something that I can then think of in my head. I don't need to worry about it. It's the same. It's routine. It's almost automatic after the first couple of mm. weeks. I will still make sure that there is um, a red meat in there, a f- uh, fish, a white fish, a oily fish as well. There'll also be probably um, some form of poultry in there, so chicken or turkey, and more likely eggs somewhere. Yeah. So every meal will have something different in there. It won't be the same every time because you cannot possibly maintain a full nutritional balance just by eating the same thing all day every day, mm. and it'll drive you mad. Yeah. Clearly. Um, but yours is quite complicated because it's completely different every day. I have two days. So I've got two high days, two medium days, and then two low days, um, followed by my free day relaxed. And do you, do you um, um, change your change training, training depending, depending on your, on your uh, uh, high, day, high day, low day, day, medium day? Well, I, I would have to say no because I understand some people – they prefer to be doing their legs on their high day and you know they'll they'll specifically time it according to their their training schedule um at the moment i'm doing an upper lower and i've been doing this for quite a few weeks i think pretty much a couple of weeks into my prep uh because mainly i wanted to do really high frequency i'm a huge fan of frequency and my upper lower I've devised a really nice little program for myself, which is upper A, um, lower A, and I've got A, B, and C. So as opposed to people having A and B, I've got three different days, and um, okay. that's working quite nicely for me. But I'm also... So, so tell us what they are then. What's, what's an A, B, and C? Um, John... Don't go just telling us like little bits and not giving <laughs> us all the details. Okay. We need to know. Yeah, let me just quickly open it up for you. Okay. So, upper A, we've got. Do you want me to go through all the exercises? If you want, yeah, why not? Okay, so upper A, we've got flat dumbbell um, bench press. Then we've got uh, seated shoulder press, Arnie's Arnold shoulder press. 
weighted dips, lapped pull downs. Oh, no, hang on. No, I'm looking at the wrong one. Ah, I've got so so many notes here. Upper lower Jan down to thousand fifteen. Here we go. Okay, so upper A has shouldered shoulder overhead press. Then we've got deadlifts. Then we've got flat dumbbell chest press. Then we've got chin ups. Then we've got skull crushes, superset with extensions, and then we've got abs and calves. Um, lower A is back squats, leg press, leg curls, um, unilateral leg extensions, abs and calves. Upper B, we've got flat barbell bench, weighted pull-ups, dumbbell shoulder press, uh, easy bar preacher curls, overhead extensions with push down superset and abs and calves then we've got lower b stiff legged deadlifts um back squats leg curls unilateral leg extensions glute ham raise abs and calves then we've got upper c which is weighted dips single arm dumbbell rows incline dumbbell chest press rear delt raises close grip pull downs abs and calves and lower c we've got back squats stiff legged deadlifts leg press leg curls glute bridges abs and calves brilliant so you're training six days a week yep and you're hitting everything three times yep everything three times yeah and the reason why people say why well, won't got a b and c it's so simple because there are certain exercises which are always my bread and butter and I just cannot not do them. Um, and for instance, variations of dumbbells versus barbell, I always have to have both. I can't forget one and do more of the other and, you know, then come back to the other one months later. I always want both. So I want to try and fit in all of my exercises, all of my favorite exercises into the week so that I'm doing at least one of my favorite exercises once per week, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And how long are these workouts taking you? They are really not, I, my, um, my workouts have gone down in time considerably. Um, it sounds like a long time, but I used to be working out for about, this is just before prep. So like during Christmas, it's not, not too yeah. long ago, usually would average about an hour and a half. Now it's probably about an hour to an hour 15 each one Good. so it's gone down but having said that it's not because i'm doing high re i haven't changed my training style i'm not doing high high reps and you know trying to cut by doing lots of uh high rep work and high volume work yeah. not really i'm pretty much still doing a balance in fact the majority of my work is still about five six reps and some of it is a high rep stuff when it comes to the isolations and, you know, the burning out stuff and the smaller muscle groups. Okay. And any cardio at the moment? No, I was actually speaking to Ben just yesterday about this. And I know so loads of the guys at the gym who are doing the same competition as me, they're all, uh, I think from the, from 16 weeks out, they, Killing themselves. They would, had they have been doing hours and hours of cardio every day, morning faster cardio, after after training cardio. I, I was really shocked that they've literally just gone in from from huge, huge, huge bulking to absolutely killing themselves with cardio and and dropping calories at the same time. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Crazy. It's, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Listen, everyone, everyone's got their own way of doing yeah. it, and you know, everyone's getting different results from doing different things but personally when i want someone to come in for a comp mm. cardio is the last thing that we'll put in and we'll put it in as late as mm. possible if you're getting the results that you are getting right now which you're losing a pound a week it's a nice steady pace your, your calories are very high you're training really hard you're doing six days a week in the gym i don't see any reason to start stressing your body with cardio mm. at all be it fasted, fed, doesn't really matter. Um, because I don't think it's going to improve on what you're doing. If you start burning off that extra calorie count, I think you're just going to start burning into muscles rather than body fat. Well, I think I think not necessarily. I mean, you, if you, it depends how much cardio you're doing, obviously. But yeah. 
like for me, um, when was it? I think two days ago, or was it yesterday? Time, time is morphing into one. Um, the other day, Haytham and I have started to doing, uh, started to do morning training because I'm quite, I'm quite a big fan of doing twice a day training. Just coming into that last um, half of my prep, I'm keen to do AM and PM um, training. And I was saying to Ben, who's doing his AM cardio, that instead of going in and like walking on the stepper, f doing fasted cardio at 6 a.m., I'd rather go in, lift a bit of weights for 45 minutes on BCAAs and not necessarily doing fasted cardio. I'm not as bored as I would be just on a yeah. treadmill. And I'm, you know, I'm potentially improving technique and form and developing those motor patterns and just doing something I enjoy, still expending energy, and I'm actually lifting as opposed to in cardio. Yeah. And and you'll also be creating better detail mm. within the within the muscle and also yeah. preventing muscle loss. Yeah. Whereas long steady state cardio it's, is your yeah exactly. It will it will accelerate muscle mm. loss and yeah you're absolutely right it's boring mm. so when you go when you say your workouts are an hour and a half is that spread across the two workouts or is that oh no no so so just the um just the evening workouts are about an hour an hour 15 minutes at the moment right and we've literally just done one morning session i think it was either yesterday or the day before okay and it's it's not one of those things that I'm going to be doing every single morning. I'm going to be up there. Just maybe every other day I'll get up and we'll do a nice 45 minute, not huge, 45 minute session in the morning. Just yeah. personally, my my preference to supplementing my training, as it were, doing that little bit extra in the morning, is just to go by auto regulation. Do what I feel like. Just do a mixture of things that make me feel good. Yeah. And and do you think you'll bring in any cardio or like traditional kind of cardio on the way in with be it hit training? Or, yeah, I think hit or... training will be my first port of call and that will probably come in, um, what am I, seven, seven weeks out. So I would say probably about four weeks out, I reckon. But depend, yeah. depending how things go, I might just see how I come along. Um, I might do worse or better in the next few weeks because it gets as it gets closer to the time. It's um, obviously things are going to slow down. Things are going to start getting tougher and tougher and your body's going to be more resistant to getting those stubborn pockets yeah. of fat reduced. There's, there's, there's definitely a place for it later mm. on. I think it, it's a useful tool, but just at the right time. Mm. Um, so outside of the, the diet <laughs> and training, people, people don't realise that there's more to competition than just turning up because you've trained and dieted there's getting the posing right there's getting the bikini in your case yeah. correct and fitted properly yeah. there is the tan that's so important so on and so forth the shoes mm -hmm. where are you with that at the moment so my posing i have i have a lot of practice to do um i've got a couple of sessions that I'll be doing one-on-one -on -one with a couple of people that are going to help me uh, who know what they're doing and who know who know what they're looking at but I don't I'm not one of those girls that that wears heels on a regular basis anymore I mean I'm, I may have done it <laughs> some stage in my life always wear heels but not anymore and that's the one thing that's really scaring me I'm gonna have to really I'm gonna have to just get so comfortable in those heels and not look like I'm modeling on stage. Tan wise, I have been using um, Mel Melanotan 2, which I, I've, it's, it's an interesting one. I've had, <laughs> I've had a couple of funny issues with, with that. Um, basically, it's, it's, I came across it um, from a friend that I, I heard was using it and has been using it for a very long time. And I was quite curious. Basically, it was developed, as far as I understand, it was developed to fight cancer by increasing your um, melanin production in, in, your, in your skin. Absolutely. And yeah. you basically load up. It's, a, it's like an injection, like an insulin injection. Um, 
and as you load up on it you can use a sun because I'm not a big fan of sunbeds just as a general rule I don't like I don't like the effect that it has on your skin it ages you it's not very healthy obviously um, but I know that you have to start sort of building something up before the competition so I thought okay I'm gonna try this and um, it effectively reduces the amount of sunbed that you should um, that you'll that you can use but get more more um, more effective tan out of it so um, I ordered myself the um, millet ah, millet melon melanotan or melatonin I always get it mixed up and on the first day, basically, you you have to try and load up your body with it in very, very small amounts. And the first time I thought, I'm quite, I have a high threshold of things. And I thought, why not just quadruple the, <laughs> the initial first loading phase? And let me just, you know, how bad can it be? One of the side, a couple of the side effects are, you get hot flushes. That's fine. I can deal with any hot flushes. Second one is just a little bit nausea. You feel really, well, you, you should feel a little bit nauseous or a little bit funny. So I thought, how bad can it be? I'll just, I'll instead of taking a quarter or a fifth of a microgram, I'll just take a microgram, it'll be fine. And so off I went, did my first injection and quite happy as Larry a couple of hours later I was thinking this this is fine got a couple of hot flushes not not really anything not any big deal then I went off to um, the bank I had a I had an, a two-hour appointment with my mortgage advisor and I'm sitting there in this tiny little office that's absolutely boiling it's just roasting in there and I've got <laughs> I've got my car, glass of water and throughout those two hours I progressively just started to feel like absolute death <laughs> and I thought I, I just thought I'm gonna die here in this room in this tiny little chair <laughs> looking like I'm sweating and melting into the floor and by the end of it I stuck it out by the end of it I left I just and I, I had to drive home drove home just lay there in the dark on my bed for hours just feeling absolutely terrible <laughs> um, by the end of it I just I, I I took a couple of sleeping pills, which I do not condone to everyone to do, but I thought, right, I just need to help myself get to sleep and just ride it out where I don't have to feel it. Next morning, I think it was about 12 hours later or so, I woke up feeling, you know, normal again from the previous day. I think I took it about 4 p.m. Oh, before... Also, before that, I actually went to the sunbed. I had a six-minute session on the sunbed and came out looking Greek, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. And everyone, everyone comes, oh, my gosh, you look so healthy and you're looking a bit brown. <laughs> so it was, feeling like that. Yeah, it was, it was a really funny experience. And I know it's, it's just one of those things that you have to um, – you have to be sensible and just take it slow. I'm one of those people that is a little bit, um, how shall I say, impatient, but also I'm quite hardcore when it comes to certain things. And I just think, oh, why not? Just do, just do more, and you know, just do it quicker, and I'll do it my own way. Um, yeah. So yeah, learn. So less to be learnt here, Christina. <laughs> yeah. Is there are um, dosage instructions for a reason. With with most things for a very good reason yeah. um and when it says take one every four hours or whatever it is <laughs> that's what it means um <clears throat> but i do want to make a very serious point here christina's talking about a um a product that is used in an injectable form and as much as it is as i understand it is subcutaneous mm -hmm. um it's still an injection of some description mm. What I don't want people to get confused with is you mentioned an insulin injection. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Do not anyone get confused with the fact that Christina is saying she takes a performance enhancing drug of any mm -hmm. kind or steroid or she's on insulin inje or anything like that. 
it's not that at all. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't want people to go, oh, I heard her on a podcast going, yeah, she, she injects this, that, and the other, she's on the gear, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Because that's not the case. So I just want to make that very clear because I know people will take things as they like. Yeah, absolutely. Not to, not to be mixed up or misunderstood there at all. But um, so, yeah, I think it's 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 interesting. It's had some great results. I've I've literally had three um, three sunbed sessions, about six minutes each, and the, the tan is just it's it's considerable, shall I say? It is considerable. I saw I saw you yesterday evening, and it was definitely considerable. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so bikini wise, what's happening with that? Um, so yeah, I've got my bikini already. Um, I've I've actually I've had to send it back just for a, a little tiny adjustment, and aside from that, I should be receiving it back next week on Monday. And and do you think that the fitting of it is going to change significantly between now and and the comp? Um, not because your, not body, your body shape will change. I no? think not significantly. We've we've had a couple of fitting sessions. Uh, not fitting. Well, I've sent measurements a couple of times, and there are certain ways you can adjust it yourself if you need to. But oh. um, I don't think it will make a huge difference between now and seven weeks. Um, mainly because obviously it's it is stretchy, it is elastic. So certain things like the crossover um, bands at the back they stretch in as you as you get tiny, a little bit tighter, okay. but I don't think, um, I don't think I'm, it's not like I'm going to lose another 10 pounds or anything. So Yeah. Good. Okay. And then um, the heels. Yeah. Got them sorted yet? I've got yet? those, yeah. I've had, do you know, I've had walking those around, months. Walking around the house in them? Yeah. Well, I've had them for months before even Christmas. I think I had them around sort of October, September. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've worn them a few times, but I have to say I, I haven't been as consistent as i should have should have been it's i mean it's difficult you don't come home and just walk around in heels because you have so much other stuff to do and i'm usually sitting there on like at my desk or something so yeah yeah well you're gonna have to do I it know. at some point it will it will be literally i'll be doing about 10 15 minutes every evening post workout for the next seven weeks so i think oh. yeah get that muscle memory in there as well with the posing and what do you think has been your your biggest learning experience from this so far? So it's the first time you've done it. Yeah. You've done it on your own. So far as I know, you don't have a coach. Mm -hmm. um, you've created your own training program. You've decided what diet's going to work best for you. You've then created that. For you, in this whole experience, what's been the key factor? Because now you're training, obviously, <coughs> other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got your uh, kvfit.com up and you've got clients. What would you say now from your experience you could give to other people from this? Okay, so, yeah, I had a short stint just before December working with a fantastic coach called Corin Ingman. And she's she's um, part of the Trained by J JP um, team, as it were. She is fantastic, and for ju literally just, just for personal reasons, I decided not to do contest prep with her, mainly because I did. I had I w overall, in a nut nutshell, I'm quite sort of I'm ex I enjoy doing that stuff myself. I'm quite excited. I'm a bit of a control freak, and I like the challenge in myself. I'm learning a lot about myself, and I like doing things how I feel within myself are right to follow and I'll always constantly be evolving and changing things as I come along you know closer and closer to the closer to the um, competition so one of the things that I've learned is to listen to your body and to know when to step back there have been times where over the past um, nine weeks where I've been ill and so many people have been ill all around me and everybody's having weeks off here and weeks off there and you have to really understand and listen to that moment where you maybe you're training too much because if you're in a calorie deficit you have to you have to be a little bit more in tune in tune with what your body's trying to tell you um, I got a really bad chest infection at one point this is just a couple of weeks ago which I still am not over it's really 
feels like I've got razor blades in my um in my in my um chest and it's really awful because you've got Mars you've got Ben that was off sick everybody's just one by one and it once it when it gets around especially if you're in a small office I work in a small office and people get ill all the time you have to really be careful you have to look after yourself and if it means you need more recovery a little bit more nutrition um you have to really be on the ball with that and yeah. there was what, what, forcing yourself to go in the gym when you're not well isn't going to do you any yeah, good yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah there was a, there was a time where i had to take a whole week off literally just temperature on the bed for a whole week and it really it, it messes with your brain because you feel depressed you feel like you're behind everyone else you feel like you've lost a week um, obviously when you come back you feel like you have got to take extra time to to t bring yourself back to your baseline you know it has an effect on the way you feel and your motivation levels obviously you just everything's kind of you feel like the world is working against you but you have to try and get over that you tr have to try not to stress stress is a big one I mean I know very well personally things if things affect me in my in my head then I cannot train some people use it to fuel their training I'm not like I'm not like that at all like I can't even when I'm angry people fuel their um, their training with their anger I can't do that so I can't hear you Paul sorry how did you approach the way you were feeling um when you were off ill and then you would start thinking oh i'm a week behind and other people are going to be ahead of me i'm, I'm not going to lose the weight i'm etc how did you cope with that <laughs> well you just have to get in there and do it can you turn your you turn volume down, down? down yeah it's just yeah. is it shouting yeah <laughs> okay that's better yeah no you have to just forget about how well not forget about how you're feeling but you have to try and be rational be logical um go into the gym and just get on with it just suck it up and do it you you can't i mean when i came back after being sick the first maybe two or three days they were horrible but you have to get over it get over yourself and get over that worry because you know full well everybody gets ill throughout the year you've We've all been ill before and had to come back, and we've all got stronger when we come back. So you have to just rationalise with yourself and and put things into perspective. And you do have seven weeks left or nine weeks left or whatever it is. So it's never too late. I, obviously, unless it's your peak week and you're sick, but that's the most important thing: is get it out of the way, get yourself better, and do not do not come in prematurely where you can potentially get a rebound effect and just get even more sick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, on a brighter note, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if we spoke about this before because it's it's happened quite recently, but you are now a sponsored athlete, I believe. I am. I am sponsored by 5% Nutrition that I'm wearing now. <laughs> yeah. Who are they? Um, who, who runs it? Why are, they, why are you with them, etc.? This is Rich Piana's amazing supplement company, and those guys are fantastic. They are, obviously, they're going to be at Body Power. In fact, do come and see us at the Body Power stand. We will all be there. Um, obviously, the, the 5% um, UK athletes should all be there. I'm definitely going to be on the stand. Um, yeah, I've been with them for, I think, a couple of months now. And they got in touch via Instagram of all places. And it's I think it's been a long time, not a long time coming, but I've been in touch with a lot of their athletes for, for quite a while. And we've been interacting and communicating. So, you know, I'm a fan of their staff. And, yeah, it's it's kind of all fallen into place. And I've I've spoken to the right people. And they 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 came across me and found me and got in touch and things worked out so very excited about that and it's all come together at the right time because obviously you're going to use some supplements during your prep yep um and by having them supplied for you rather than having to go out and buy them mm -hmm. is always always a good move mm -hmm. what are you using from a supplement point of view at the moment i am well i can go through the whole list but uh i'm a big fan of the all day you may at the moment which is 
literally it's it's turned my life around mainly because and I've spoken to you about this before I'm not I'm not very good with the whole water thing I can discipline myself with drinking a lot of water but I hate the taste of water and squash gets very boring um, so basically all day you maze uh, all your BCAAs and it's just to you can literally drink it all day and I will set up myself a whole four litre bottle with all day you may and it will just fuel me throughout the day and it'll get my water intake in and it tastes really good it comes in I think four or five different flavours um, there's it's also a bit more to it than just BCAAs it's got some essential amino acids in there as well yeah. along with some other some other ingredients which are actually it's actually a really good mix of um a lot of different nutrients mm. that you would want to be taking almost throughout the day mm. because you'd want a, um, a regular steady intake, steady flow yeah. of it. Um, so, I mean, I've used it before mm. and I see the value of it, but I think they've got a really good mix of stuff there. Mm. And mm. they've just brought out their new creatine supplement, which I'm looking forward to. It's called Creatine. Uh, real food. Real food, which is everybody yeah. was very scared about the concept of it having sweet potato and oats and and uh, fruits in there and you know the the very odd mix of that, but it's actually really nice. I was very pleasantly surprised. It's quite it's got quite sweet taste to it and it's quite thick, so highly recommend that. If it's uh, I mean if you are one of those people that perhaps takes um, carb supplements, you know. If, so yeah. that's so that's a carb powder yeah. that's made from whole foods, yeah. as opposed to just sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd add you'd have that on its own, or you'd add that into a protein shake, or what? You, you can make a shake of it, or you can put it into a shake. Entirely up to you. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, it tastes it tastes good either way. I usually mix it with some fruit and some some frozen fruit and some ice and water, and it tastes really good. And then, so anything else you're using from a, uh, a supplement Supplements, point of view? yeah. So if I am training in the morning, I will usually be training fasted except with BCAAs. And along with that, I'll take carnitine and caffeine. Um, not coffee, that is just caffeine. Um, then, so f with my first meal, I'll usually take my Multivit, one gram of omega 3s, um, one gram of vitamin C and 5,000 IU vitamin D. Then I've got um, another gram of vitamin C and omega-3 at like midday um, in the afternoon. During my intra, I will take my Pepto-Pro, my EAAs, my leucine, creatine, and usually highly branched um, cyclic dextrin. And then post-workout, one of my favorites at the moment is phosphatidyl serine, which is a really effective cortisol suppressor, as it were. I mean, it's a, it's a very good supplement for specifically for um, exercise induced um, cortisol. So I take about 800 micrograms of phosphatidyl serine along with one gram ALA, and I find that's especially if you're training on a regular on a high frequency basis like I am I think it's fine I find that it's very effective mm -hmm. um, it's also just good for cognitive function for focus and just de-stressing basically that's in a nutshell it's it's a, it's a great product phosphatidyl serene is something that has been recommended for a fair while mm -hmm. now for anybody that's got cortisol levels issues mm -hmm. um, and it was made popular by Charles Poliquin when he did his biosig. And if you were holding fat around your belly, then the standard prescription was um, phosphatidyl serine. Mm. The one thing about it that people have to realise is it is high dosage. You do need to take around yeah. 800 milligrams a day yeah. to uh, – well, the studies show that 800 milligrams is the effective dose. Yeah, because th this is the really important thing because they actually recommend on most supplements, even if you get it for from like my protein, they will recommend 200 microgram if I'm not correct, if I'm if I'm yeah. not wrong. Um, but yeah, you have you need a minimum of about 600 to 800 to get that um, cortisol suppression to make it really yes. more effective. Which then makes it expensive. 
Ah, oh, no, not really. No, no. no. Okay. It's still, so, it's still, you know, the little tiny scoops. It's yeah. just three of those scoops. In fact, three of those scoops gives you nine hundred. Okay, so you use a powder form. Yeah, as opposed uh, yeah. To sorry, your mine is a powder form. Yeah, and and it, how how is it's, that? It's well, put it in a shake because it <laughs> it does not taste. I remember the very first time I bought it, and I thought oh, I'll just have it with water like creatine. No, yeah. no, 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 no absolutely awful it just tastes so rank so if i were you I'd, the way that i personally do it is i put it in um a scoop of whey um frozen berries and and whatever frozen fruits um water and then obviously the the usually creating ala and phosphatidylserine and then you just you won't taste it at all so right. put it in a nice little smoothie if you can and so you take your um l-carnitine as well as a oh sorry alpha lipoic acid you take as a as a powder yeah okay so do you find that you get a real burning sensation as you drink that or no. as it goes down no. not at no. all okay no. interesting no all right a lot of people do they, they if you as you as you drink it it sits down through that esophagus really? and it gives you a real kind of warming but it's quite a burning sort of sensation no no i same with the capsules, even but, if you take them and you don't swallow them properly. Is it, it's not an R A L A. No, it's not the R version. No. Yeah, so people really do report getting. Really? Um, but yeah, even yeah, with yeah. what they put, just yeah. with sh like smoothies and shakes and stuff. Oftentimes, but that's no, fine. Well, clearly, you're that um, Amazon woman <laughs> can handle anything. Um, so alpha lipoic acid and uh, phosphoryl serine post-workout anything later on in the day three bed i will take my zma and uh, another gram of omega-3 okay and it's just a standard zma that you yep. take yes standard. find it works for you um difficult to tell it's very difficult to tell very difficult to tell i will be the first to put my hands up and say well you don't always know when something's working unless you maybe you yeah. perhaps stop using it and then you can suddenly see. Um, so, yeah, Z ZMA, I'm, I've never been one to say, oh, my gosh, yeah, I really feel that working. But I'm also one of those people that's – I know – okay, so I know people that will, will think that they will as quickly assume something's working if they feel anything different. I'm the total opposite extreme. I'll be skeptical and I'll, th I'll think that things are more coincidental or, you know, there's more to it than just what it Absolutely. is. You need some more, you need some more evidence yeah. rather than yeah. just one, one dose. Yeah. Um, L-carnitine, you don't use any of that pre-workout? L-carnitine. I know you have it no, in the morning. I just have it in the morning, not, not pre-workout. No, I think, okay. yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Would you have it in your intro? Did you say intro or pre? Pre. Okay. It, it's it, l carnitine helps get fat out of the cells, mm. gets it used for energy, mm. whereas alpha lipoic acid obviously is an insulin mimicker and gets insulin or gets sorry um, energy back into the cells. Mm. So by taking a bit of alpha uh, sorry l carnitine pre workout, um, one it will help with getting a bit of fat burning, mm. and two it's a really good uh, fat uh, sorry works really well for cognitive function. Mm. So it'll give you some good brain focus yeah. and so on and so forth with your with your training. So um, it's an interesting one to put in pre, I would have thought. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it in the morning, right? Yeah. You're putting it in pre in the morning with caffeine yeah. and um, something else you mentioned. So yeah, I'm yeah, I'd um yeah maybe. Are you a fan of tyrosine? Oh, tyrosine. Yeah, I like a bit of tyrosine now and then. Yeah, see that's another. I actually that's... actually like. Um, a product called S A M E, uh -huh. which you can't actually get over here. Mm -hmm. um, but I have got somebody in New York as we speak that's coming home soon and going to be bringing me some. And that is kind of a precursor to many different aspects when it comes to um, a lot of the choline and different amino acids. Mm -hmm. So it, it produces a lot of good benefits from one place, if you like. It's, it's a bit further down the chain, mm -hmm. so it kind of supplements everything. Um, but it's very good for methylation as well um, and making sure that your B vitamins are, are getting active and all that kind of thing. So, um, But, yeah, tyrosine, a lot of people get good use out of it. Mm. Um, taurine as well as a um, something to use for cognitive function and focus works pretty well for a lot of people. Mm. Um, tyrosine gives people a lot of energy sometimes as well. They find that they can really crack on with stuff yeah, if they've taken focus, a lot of fats. Yeah. 
yeah, if they're taking a lot of fats, um, it really helps get that into the into the brain for some people. Mm-hmm. Everyone's individual. Try it. Yeah, I, it I I used to take tyrosine as well with my um, with my intra actually, but um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't really feel. I don't know. It could have been working. Could have not been working for me. It's I'm one of those people. I find it hard to tell. Generally, if it's if it's cognitive function, the things that work really well are like alpha GPC. Mm. Um, uh, what's the others? L-carnitine, mm. um, herpazine A, which is quite hard to get hold of, and uh, there's another one. It escapes me at the moment. It will come back to me in a second. <laughs> there you go. Cognitive function. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are some really specific ones that you can really use for that. Um, and if you're on a high fat approach, it can really enhance that mm-hmm. because obviously the fats are getting in there. Um, okay, so what's your now your plan for the next seven weeks? How are you how are you going to come into this comp? Well, I actually this morning I was expecting to have to evaluate my um, calorie intake, but I had lost I think it was like I don't know um, point two of a pound. It was like a couple of yeah, st- still lost a tiny bit from from the past couple of days. So I'm going to see if I can continue to keep it at 2,800. And then I think I might give it one last push. And then I might start hit in the next few weeks. Okay. See how it goes. But I, I don't know. I'm For me, I don't, it's not, I know the scale is a very good gauge as well, but I prefer the mirror. I'm, I'm yeah, big on just looking in the mirror seeing how I look. And also one of the things I do is just um, take a video of myself all the time on um, on my phone and just take a video of yourself posing, look at your videos, see small changes and do them on a regular basis because people think that they haven't changed in, you know, a few days or a week. They, they just don't expect to see any change. But then when you line those up together, when you take screenshots and just put them side by side, you can see small changes. You can see where you need to perhaps work on something or when where you have to address something so at the moment i'm literally just playing it by ear and seeing where i need to adjust um yeah i think it's very important to take pictures and videos Mm -hmm. um i think the best way to gauge your progress is via the tape measure Mm. and see what what's changing where it's changing if it's changing in places you don't want it to, in other words, you're losing size from places, then that's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, if it's coming off in the places that you want, then that's great. But the reason I think videos and photos are important, mm. and the reason I think you should keep a record of when they were taken, is because if you ever do another competition, not necessarily you, but if anyone does one, yeah. during their prep, they can look back and see yeah. what they were like at the same time mm-hmm. in their previous prep. Mm-hmm. Because if they feel as though, because once you get into competition shape, everything else is fat. Mm-hmm. Everything else that you do, you'll always be fat. You go, oh, I'm, not, I'm not as tight as I could be. I'm not as, as lean as I should be, blah, 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 blah. And that's not normal, but that's where your mind works. Mm. So when you're then coming back into a prep again, and you feel as though, oh, I'm miles out. I was much. I'm sure I was tighter than this before. You can. You've got a reference to go back to and say, look, actually, this is how I looked at the same time last prep, and I came in looking amazing. So I don't need to worry about being too far out or behind schedule. I think I'm in the right place at the right time, and I've got the proof. Mm. Whereas if you don't have that reference to go to, I know for a fact there are people that panic. And go. Oh, I'm. I'm not losing it quick enough. Or the next person in the gym is doing much better. Everything's individual. So keep that record. It will do you the world of good. Yeah, and I think also one of the things that I found most what, what, that works best for me is, you know, goal setting. For for some people, it's they'll set set um, a weekly goal, or they'll look at, at it more of a bigger picture, like their whole prep or they'll divide it into quarters. And for me, this might sound really strange, but I found it really useful just to take one day at a time. I will set my daily goals and 
that's all. I won't think about next week. I'll just think about today, what I need to work on and achieve by the end of today. If there's anything that I need to discipline myself about, whether it's I need to drink more water today, um, get more sleep today, get into bed earlier, things like that. That That is what drives me. That keeps my motivation um, higher than ever. So Brilliant. So daily goals work for mm. you. And if you hit your daily goals, then your long-term goals have to come yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just taking one step at a time because sometimes people might think uh, things things become – things look more like mountains if if they're looking at the bigger picture and they think that there's further to go or too much work and you know it's more more of a burden on them yeah it gets absolutely. more stressful people, people get very overwhelmed yeah. by something that they look in their head they look at it and it's massive mm. but sometimes if you just change that perspective and you look at that same goal but you look down on it yeah and you shrink it down a bit all of a sudden that overwhelm feeling is is disappeared and you you feel far more in control and much more motivated yeah hunger is another big thing for me it's it's a challenge but the thing is everybody and i've spoken to a few people because a lot of um a lot of people will ask me on a regular basis about hunger because obviously my calorie intake is still reasonably high for the average person mm. but as as we were saying at right at the beginning it's relative and it might be higher for somebody else but for my average or for my baseline it's still lower and i still do feel really hungry and it is something okay. that i will have to deal with i mean not all the time of course not all the time but there are hunger pangs and there are times where you feel you feel like giving in to temptation and you know it's it's not very it's not a very comfortable um situation to be in most of the time and how do you deal with that then? Because obviously a lot of competitors do come across it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it is, it's one of those, it's an ongoing thing. Oh, how to deal with hunger? How, well, you, you can't, it's just part of the game. You will, I mean, there are certain things you can do to help, i.e. eat more veggies. Your body mm. can only gauge um, how your satiation, not by how many calories you're taking in, but the volume of food inside you. So yeah. bulk out your food with more vegetables whether it's broccoli or cauliflower or, or um, I'm, I'm enjoying mushrooms at the moment. Mushrooms are a big one for me. Um, get adventurous with your food, you know, find new food sources and, and things that are going to be more interesting for you. Okay. So interestingly, do you count vegetables in your calories? This is another thing. No, I don't No. Right. Even my carbohydrates. And I know you get carbohydrates from, um, from most veggies. I yeah. don't count them. Although, to be fair, I don't eat a lot of starchy vegetables, things like carrots and sweet corn um, and peas. But even just your cauliflower and broccoli, they will have, they will have, but I, I don't count them personally, just my personal. Okay. Thing. And then finally, have you ever tried glucamine as something to help with hunger? Is that, um, is that that, um, that plant? Yes, so it's a fibre. Yeah, it's that fibre plant, and they make like rice and noodles into it. They do make rice and noodles <laughs> out of it, and it's the most foul thing yeah, in the world. Yeah. I don't like it. But no, you have to learn how to you... cook it right. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay, so you can cook me that one night, and, and I'll I'll try it. Yeah. Joe's a uh, my training partner. Joe's a big big fan of it. Oh. He he doesn't mind eating it. For me, I, I just don't get on with it. But you can get. Um, Konjac, which yeah. is the fiber, yeah. as glucamine in in um, in supplement form. Right. So you can take that as a um, capsule, mm -hmm. and um, it will definitely make you feel less like eating for a while. Mm. Um, so that might be something to explore later on in the in the prep. Yeah, I didn't realize that it comes in a supplement. But the um, as far as the they, most people will come across them in the form of zero calorie noodles or or miracle noodles or whatever and to be honest i haven't had them in a very long time i had them probably like a year ago when i first came across them and the way that i would recommend to do them because they they have this texture um it's quite rubbery it's like mm. it's like mushroom almost but when when you cook it and it will never crisp up like normal noodles will kind of go nice and crunchy or or you know um, pasta like, but they're more, 
um, like having a bowl of slugs. <laughs> yes, so exactly. The way that I found out to improve that is to basically, assuming you probably want to be doing like low carb, or whatever, but I used to get like Parmesan cheese, or you can even get like low fat cheese now, which I'll talk, I'll get back to that one, um, and just okay. basically sprinkle it and and just shallow um, or stir fry it in with the cheese, and it comes out really. It's it's just completely different texture. It kind of comes out a little bit crispy, a little bit cheesy and stringy, and it's actually so much more palatable. Tastes really really good. Yeah, it can't be any worse. <laughs> yeah, and obviously with your soy sauce and stuff. Um, but another thing that I came across now, most people who have ever done a like contest prep or or diet or for whatever a photo shoot or anything or an, an event, they will know what it's like to be scouring through the grocery stores for the most creative ideas with food or checking out new different lower calorie foods and high volume foods and the one thing that i came across the other day which don't judge me on this Go on. <laughs> and, um, you know um the weight watcher stuff yep. now i was just in the cheese aisle and they have you know those those shredded cheeses that you can sort of put on top of foods and stuff mm -hmm. and i came across the little bags of weight watchers cheese and I was very pleasantly surprised because this bag comes in, I think, at 200 grams of cheese. And right. it's all shredded, and you could easily go for, through about half a pack in a, in a sitting or whatever, just putting it on stuff, whether it's salad or whatever, um, or bread. And per 100 gram, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's something like 40, 40, 40 or 50% protein. The rest is, I think it's like 10, 10 grams of fat or something. It's really ridiculously low in fat, okay. and most of it is protein. So you can't really complain if you are one of those people that just loves cheese and cannot get it out of your diet. Now, the way that I love to eat it, just as a snack, is get iceberg lettuce. And I would just peel, peel off the iceberg lettuce and make like a little parcel, line it with cheese, wrap it up like it's a pancake but it's a lettuce yeah. pancake with cheese inside and a bit of salsa or whatever really tasty really tasty snack so Excellent. All right. well, we'll look tip. at that i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna have to look at the ingredients first yeah i'm sure yeah. we'll put something in it but um yeah brilliant if it gets you through the day and it, and it keeps you on track then that's exactly the sort of tip people need yeah it's just for those times where you might have a craving now i i don't eat cheese a whole load but there are times where you just might crave a bit of cheese or something yeah. and but keeping your cravings satisfied and keeping your brain, like, you know, satiated with the things that you want yeah. can stop you from going completely off the deep end yeah. and ending up with your head in a pizza and, you know, yeah. having a, a really bad day, which can lead to two days and three days. I used to know somebody who used to uh, compete as a figure competitor, and when she'd have her cheat meal on a Sunday, she, it would go on and on and on for hours, and she really got quite upset with the fact that she couldn't control herself mm. after the after the evening meal she'd end up eating and eating and eating and it, and it really was a concern mm. over a period of time i mean she dealt with it in the end but certainly for her first first one or two competitions it was a big problem mm. but anyway never mind okay so i'm gonna let you go because i know you're gonna get down to the gym and we've been chatting on for hours yep. um Tell us more about you again. KVFit.com is where we will find you. KVFit.com. Yeah, that's um, do a whole load of online coaching. Most of my clients are online. I've got a nice little client base over in America now, which is fantastic. So, Good. yeah, if, if anyone's looking for that sort of thing, just come and check me out. Obviously, and, and what do you offer on there? Sorry. Um, I do pro training programs and diet plans for everyone. And, of course, I'm one of those people that I love to support my clients along the way so i'm always just at the other end of the line whether it's email or phone or whatsapp or whatever just to give that people people that moral support that they need to succeed good, good. go and check christina out and if you're going to be anywhere near portsmouth or you've got anybody else going there on the 26th of april then go down and uh, cheer her on because i'm sure she'll do very well <laughs> thank you fingers crossed well, <laughs> yeah fingers crossed all right so i will see you soon in the meantime enjoy your workout cool thank you and i'll see you soon all right take care bye, bye.